Hey everyone, welcome to week 12. Um, in class this morning or this afternoon, uh, a couple of you mentioned that maybe you'd like uh, a couple more videos and Taryn specifically mentioned kind of wanting a little help with doing uh, bio stuff. So here's a little few thoughts about bios. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched any Buffy the Vampire Slayer reruns, but if you have, you might know that um, when, the, when the team, the Scooby gang, is faced with the demon of the week, step number one is always research. Uh, the, the gang goes to the library, meets up with Mr. Giles, they drag a bunch of ancient manuscripts off the shelves, and they pour through this information and try to figure out, you know, what are we looking at, how do we deal with it. And it's the same for us. Fortunately for us, we don't need ancient manuscripts, we don't even need to go to the physical library, we have the internet, but it starts with research. So, um, you know, let's look at the art galleries, the potential clients, the potential agencies that would hire, commission, exhibit us. Let's look at the other people who do concept art, ceramic, fine art, photography, etc. Let's just poke around. So um, if I'm a ceramics artist and I find a gallery and I take a look and they only exhibit photography, obviously that's not a gallery I'm going to be showing at. Um, now it's still a gallery that you might like to get to know people. You know, there's still artists and curators and people who are in our sphere and the more people in our sphere that we can connect with, the better. If you go to a place like Bergamot Station, a whole bunch of art galleries in one old train station, now turned into a metro stop and gallery space, um, you know, the person sitting at the front desk of most of those galleries might be a UCLA art history grad student. So it's someone pretty close to your age with pretty similar interests, thinking about similar questions. So meeting these people is really priceless for the long term. Um, but the photography gallery, obviously, if I'm a ceramics artist, that's not going to be the connection. So I keep looking. Maybe I find a ceramics gallery that shows, or an, a gallery that shows all ceramics artists. Awesome. But then I look through the roster and I discover that everybody they exhibit is like a Tony Marsh kind of artist. So it's someone at the top of the ceramics game and they've been there for decades and you know, it's, it's, they're only really showing pretty high-end ceramics artists. So I, as a um, you know, next month to be Long Beach State graduate, they don't seem to have anybody like me. So I'm probably not going to exhibit at that gallery. But again, really a fantastic gallery to go to their openings face to face or online as the case may be um, and you know get to meet the people that work at the front desk, the curator, the owners, the artists who exhibit there. And maybe then finally I find a gallery that shows ceramics and other media but you know some of the artists they show are young emerging artists so this potentially could be a gallery that I could exhibit at in the next year or two or three. So let's really focus on that. And then let's look at their website. Um, how does the gallery present itself? What does it talk about? What kinds of things does it have to say? What issues is it exploring? Let's take each of the artists. How does the gallery present the artists that it exhibits? And also let's follow the link or find a link to each artist's own website. How do they present their own work? How do they talk about themselves? So, you know, when I want to enter a new land, let's poke around and ask the locals, either literally ask the locals, and why not message all those artists and say, either, you know, just like your work, blah, 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 hello, or maybe ask for something. Maybe ask for a, a 10, 15 minute Zoom cup of coffee, or, you know, as the pandemic, maybe if we eventually, you know, start to get out of that soon or, or later, maybe a physical cup of coffee, whatever, um, but try to connect. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're asking somebody to hire you, that's a big ask. It's like a, it's a commitment, it's money, it's all kinds of things. When you tell somebody that you think their work is awesome and could we have a cup of coffee and learn about your career for 10 or 15 minutes, that's not a big ask. People are busy, a lot of people won't respond to your email, but some will. So put it out there. Anyway, so research, not just for writing a bio, but for all kinds of reasons, research is very valuable. Uh, you can never really do too much research. So, you know, 
you have obviously many things on your plate in addition to making actual art, but for sure, research, networking, and becoming part of the community that you want to spend your future in is really valuable. Um, so you can think about galleries that you might want to exhibit in. You can think about uh, clients who would hire you for a specific piece and also clients where you would um, maybe get hired hired like a job. So you know there could be a, an animation studio, uh, an advertising agency, a design shop that would hire you for an illustration or a photograph or some graphic design piece. Again, either as an employee in-house full-time or part-time or intern. Um, or hire you to do a specific project. So I was an art director at Disneyland in Anaheim um, and the advertising department there, uh, so they had art director, um, creative director, graphic designer types on staff, but then they would also hire a lot of photographers to do special projects. So there were some staff photographers at Disney, but the photographers they would bring in to do the big, you know, Time Magazine two-page spread, those tended to be not staff photographers. Those were pretty well known, actually, outside photographers that would get commissioned in um, to work. But the, the people who hired them, the creative director, art director types, they were Disney staff. Uh, another place I worked was Jet Propulsion Lab up in Pasadena. So it's a similar kind of thing there. The, when they need an illustration for, you know, uh, the Perseverance Mars lander, you know, landing on Mars or something, the artists who would be hired to do that would tend not to be JPL staff, they would be hired in for the project, um, but the people who were hiring them would be graphic design types who were employees. So, you know, a place like Disney, a place like JPL, there's all kinds of other aerospace places. So, well, so Disney is kind of an arts related place, you could say, very much so actually. Um, a place like JPL or an aerospace place is not arts per se, but still they have art people, both full-time staff employees and they hire people in for things. So, you know, think about all of that and just put some time in connecting. Okay, so then the bio itself. Um, try not to stress too much about this. You know, your first bio is not going to be the most awesome bio anyone has ever written, but talk about yourself and talk about, you know, again, think about who would you like to connect with. If you want to do, you know, uh, Perseverance rovers landing on Mars, then you should have a portfolio that reflects that kind of thing. If you want to do female empowerment, feminist kind of things, you should have a portfolio that reflects that. Having one piece from one of those in a portfolio of the other isn't going to kill things, but you know, just think about the audience and the clients you're interested in and try to have a portfolio that looks in terms of the work you present and in terms of what you write about yourself that looks like the types of clients you're trying to connect to. Um, when you list things you've done, don't just put a title, put a couple sentences on, you know, you can have a bullet point, but then put a couple sentences under it and Think about the aspects of what you did that are most relevant for the work you'd like to do. Um, so even if your bio is thin, we're just graduating from the School of Art now, so you know, we're not going to have massive 10, 20 page uh, you know, CVs of, of hundreds of projects. That, that's not going to be most of us, obviously. But you know, think about the things you've done, and as I always say, kind of like shake the tree. Um, you know, if you did wedding invitations for your cousin for free. You don't have to say it was a family member. You don't have to say you got paid zero dollars. That's not really the point. The point is you had a client who wanted to express something. And so in your illustration, your graphic design, your photography, whatever you created for them, in your work, you made these choices in order to express what your client wanted to express to their audience. In this case, it might be, the, the client might be your cousin and the audience might be the rest of your family, but it doesn't really matter. This was something where you helped a client express something to an audience. So talk about that. So think about, you know, paid or unpaid, in class, out of class, 
personal project, for a friend. Think about all the things you've done and then try to put that in your bio, in your resume. Um, and then I guess depending you know, on, on how specific each of you are feeling about the work you'd like to start doing, I think for many of us, I suspect that just getting some work to do, either just to start the career and or to get a little bit of rent money, um, we're not going to be too picky and that's fine. Um, you may want to think about being picky somewhere down the road because, you know, when, when, we, when we first leave the School of Art, getting any work at all is, is going to be really exciting. It doesn't matter what the work exactly is and it doesn't matter how little you might be getting paid. It's like, I'm actually doing something for a client. This is amazing. Um, but at some point in the future, probably not right now, maybe, but at some point, you're, you might like to try to focus that this work is interesting, but I'm kind of passionate about, um, you know, immigration or feminist issues or, you know, whatever you're, you might be passionate about or, you know, exploring the planets. It could be anything. Uh, and so, you know, we may not have that luxury today, but in the future you may want to think about pushing away some of this work or bidding higher prices for it. So it's like, I'll, you know, I'll take less to do work that I'm truly passionate about and if it's this other stuff that I seem to have gotten a little bit of an audience but it's not my real focus, you know, bid a higher price and if they want to pay you that then that's great but if they don't that's okay too. Um, so that's just a few quick thoughts but mostly I would say don't feel too much pressure. Just put stuff down brainstorm you know it's when, when any of these things that we do it's important to brainstorm it's important to edit so number one is just really brainstorm really shake the tree what have I done you know dig up those wedding invitations for your cousin that logo for your friend you know anything you've done pull those things in that can be part of either a portfolio and or a bio and or an about statement um, and just throw in everything, right? Just, just fill it up um, and then spend some time editing. You know, look at the sentences you've written and try to make them a little more precise. Send it, email it to me, I'll help you work with it uh, and see how you can best express yourself. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Give it a shot, ask me for feedback if I can help and we'll give each other feedback on Discord. Um, Week 12, we're getting pretty close, so have a good week and I will see you next week.